Hey folks, Josh here, president of the Pennsylvania Deer Farmers Association. Just wanted to uh, have a quick chat with you here today and give you some updates and insights on what we have going on with the Pennsylvania Deer Farmers Association, private deer management within the uh, state of Pennsylvania, and then some things that are going on at the the national level that I think are, are compelling and I think that you'll find interesting uh, as well. So um, I guess uh, it would have been about a year ago uh, I was invited to participate as well as, as mother, uh, others in the industry um, with a USDA uh, stakeholder group and it was a, a group of uh, folks from uh, conservation groups, uh, wildlife groups, uh, DNRs, game commissions, tribal councils, uh, veterinarians, uh, our, our, our deer farmers, our private industry, etc. And it was really like a, a eclectic mix of, of people. And um, it was a, it was a, an event hosted by USDA, and they they really did a great job uh, putting it on. It was a you know a virtual virtual deal, and um, they had some breakout sessions where we had some great uh, discussions, and there was folks from kind of each segment of, of various um, industries and, and such. So, you know, as a, as, a, as a deer farmer, I got to interact with folks from DNRs, veterinarians, uh, you know, uh, various conservation groups, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, NDA, uh, so on and so forth. So it was a really, you know, there was all sorts of, of different, um, you know, different people with different ideas about um, you know, various things and, and, you know, it regarded uh, CWD or chronic wasting disease. So this is obviously a, you know, at this point, a national issue with 26 states, multiple provinces in Canada, um, finding chronic wasting disease. And, um, you know, regardless of your, your personal feelings about it, it's, um, it's an issue uh, that we all have to contend with. And, and certainly from a deer farmer's perspective, it creates a lot of uh, regulatory capture, if you will, um, that is, is burdensome. And, um, you know, it's very possible that even if you don't have chronic wasting disease that you get caught up in, in some, some of that, um, uh, regulatory capture and it. it's, it's, it can be harmful for your business. So with that said, um, after that, that meeting, there was, uh, surveys and such, and they kind of quantified some of the discussions of the day. And when I say them, I mean, USDA and then, uh, we had a follow-up meeting uh, with some presentations to discuss some of the uh, grant projects that had been funded. So this is all the stuff that goes on uh, behind the scenes, and it's it's um, it's probably one of the things that is most lacking within the the uh, you know servid uh, industry, if you will, is communication between. Uh, associations and organizations and its members. So, you know, another reason why I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here today talking uh, to you all so you can just kind of keep up a little bit on, on what's going on. It's, you know, I, I, I try to be piped into all this and I, I can't even keep up with it um, just because I, you know, I have, I have a couple other jobs that I do and responsibilities outside of this. And, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily get paid to to uh, tackle some of these these issues, so it's just a you know for for many many people it's just a volunteer thing. Anyway, with that said, that communication falls through the gaps, and you know the the member who's just living their life you know ends up stranded with uh, little to no information. So back to the the uh, presentations, you know they the USDA quantified all that. All that data and then there was you know grants uh, that were approved and these projects um, went on and there was just various different types of things okay so there has been funding approved for um, this year to do the same kind of thing again um, and I think that it's incumbent on those out there that are um, in positions to have conversations with your ag departments or state universities to lobby to them to um, put in proposals for CWD research that are beneficial, um, you know, directly to your members. And it's it's not a difficult thing to do. You you know ask for a, a meeting with 
you know, the various people that you already have relationships with. Maybe that's your, your state vet or, or uh, other veterinarians within the state, or maybe it's some professors at uh, various universities, et cetera. And um, you start, you, you know, you start dialoguing with them about what they think are the, you know, the pending issues uh, within uh, their sphere of influence, and, and you do the same and try to come to some common ground. For us, it's specifically re related to uh, chronic waste and disease and the implement the, the implications that it has to our businesses and how we work to, um, I guess, a few things. Number one, um, try to stop the spread of the disease, contain it, have management uh, strategies in place. But ultimately, we're looking for a solution where chronic waste and disease is no longer part of the equation. You know, that's the end goal. So that could be a variety of things. Um, ultimately, ultimately, maybe ending in a vaccine or, or something along those lines. So at this point in time, um, what I find to be uh, most compelling is the uh, genetic work or the genomic work that has been done by Dr. Chris Seabury from uh, Texas A&M. This project was funded uh, through USDA as well as Texas Parks and Wildlife and there was uh, another another uh, private organization. I apologize. I always forget their name. I should learn it. Um, but, you know, thank you to, to, to those organizations for doing that. Um, you know, I think that that's some of the most uh, interesting work in the chronic waste and disease space and, and really a, a light at the end of the tunnel for, you know, this, the, directly the servant industry, uh, at least initially, and, and it has other impl implications uh, down the road. So there's, there's that end of things. Now, um, what sparked this discussion or, or, or the, the one we're having now is... I was able to participate in the uh, virtual fly-in for uh, Nadifa that Nadifa organized yesterday. If you're not familiar with Nadisa, Nadifa, that's the National Deer and Elk Farmers Association, or excuse me, the North American Deer and Elk Farmers Association. And, uh, you know, I think they have like a 38-year history, um, you know, doing the work for the, the servant industry on a, on a national front. So they organized through Capitol Hill Lobbying Group. Uh, shout out to, to Jack and Stratton over there. Those are the, uh, the national lobbyists, and they do a great job organizing these events. And, of course, their staff, um, they set up these, these virtual meetings, and we got direct FaceTime with uh, various uh, legislators and staff in Washington, D.C. Now, there's a couple uh, kind of key items that I want to focus on today and let you know um, what we were looking at. And, and it's going to come with some perspective. Um, so currently the CERVID program is funded to the tune of about uh, $4 million. So that oversees the um, you know, herd certification program that, that we all know for you know, monitoring, uh, et cetera, um, deer for chronic waste and disease, and then you know, interstate transport. It also has indemnity funds that are kind of baked into that or built into that that can be distributed to uh, farms when a CWD positive does pop up and there's a depopulation event that occurs. As time has go gone on, our, our uh, and unfortunately so, our industry has been um, literally surrounded in, in many cases with um, out of control um, populations of, of deer in the wild that are, um, you know, testing positive to this disease. And ultimately, it's crossing that fence barrier into um, our operations, and then our operations are, are going positive. Now, there are, you know, isolated cases where, um, we'll, you know, we'll find some, some CWD in a place that, you know, might seem a little odd and then you know you can you can look at all the other uh, factors that go into that and you know there's so many unknowns with with the spread that containing it is is really hard and that's why uh, we as an industry have a responsibility to look at um, long-term solutions as opposed to 
uh, management strategies. With that said, those management strategies are not keeping up with the spread and more and more farms are inevitably becoming positive and those positives, um, while it's not ideal by any means, um, being able to be provided with some indemnity um, takes, the, takes the sting off the, uh, the, the action of, of depopulation. So, you know, we're looking at uh, partial value of these herds, but it, it, is, it is something and um, I'm, I'm glad we have that as an option for, for some guys. Um, that funding, you know, we've, we've worked on kind of building that back up. And, and again, we, we can't, we, we're not keeping up with, with the uh, disease expanding and with uh, new positives in now Texas and uh, Minnesota most recently, the, uh, the dollars are going to be stretched in thin. So we've asked for additional funding um, of an additional $2 million. I look at this as, um, we'll call it, uh, you know, a short to midterm play. And these are, again, this is, this is, these are, these are dollars that are going to be um, impactful to people's lives. And it's, again, it's not perfect. I'm not in favor of the government, you know, um, coming in and, and killing these, these animals, but um, it's, that's the reality of, of what goes on on the ground today. And while we work on changing that, um, th this is a, a measure that can, can take, take this thing out of that a little bit. So additional dollars uh, have been requested. We're, we're hopeful and optimistic that that will, will happen. Now, again, I was saying, you know, this is a short and medium term type of, of stopgap measure to basically get us to the point where we have these solutions. And I believe that those are just on the horizon. So, um, and I had mentioned those kind of in the, the, the previous, um, the previous segment, if you will, about the uh, predictive modeling that Dr. Chris Seabury from Texas A&M has, has put out there for us. And we'll, 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 we'll talk about that at a later date. Um, but that, that is there. So those dollars were requested, those indemnity dollars um, or, or, or dollars for our servant health program, um, which would include indemnity, were requested to the tune of an additional $2 million. So there's that. Um, there's also a bill that last year we, excuse me, two years ago, 2019, where we had a, a physical uh, DC fly-in where we were, were actively uh, going through the process of of securing funding specifically for CWD research, and um, you know, industry industry folks have have gone around, uh, you know, talk with some of the the top researchers, ask them, you know, what the scope of the work look, look looks like, and ultimately we've said it settled on uh, a fifteen million dollar appropriation bill that would um, fund various land grants and universities to um, you know to to kind of take on some of these these bigger tasks of, of um, chronic waste and disease projects. So that is going to um, be introduced hopefully here in the next week or so. Um, there is a $15 million component that is uh, on top of the initial 15 for uh, wildlife agencies. So it's looking like a, you know, a 30, $30 million bill. There's a few other bills that are floating around out there as well. Those are in the let's just say 45, 55, 60 million dollar range. Um, while we think any dollars that are appropriated to, to uh, chronic waste and disease are, are just, just fine, um, we want to target it away from uh, surveillance and uh, testing efforts on a, you know, let's just say a, a state level uh, or a national level, and we want to focus on uh, research and specific things that are ultimately um, solutions driven. And what, what does that mean? I've said that a couple times. What that means is, is we want to target research that chronic wasting disease goes away if we find an answer to it. Now, I think that there's some things out there right now, and, and we're going to be finding out real soon in the near future if these things start uh, working well. But it doesn't mean we should stop doing this type of, of, of research. And there's some pretty brilliant minds out there that have, you know, kind of novel ideas about uh, prion diseases. And I think that, that that can be helpful. So, you know, putting forth, um, 
you know, some significant funding towards that is a good thing. Um, that I just again that was that was my uh, my interactions yesterday. We had here in, in Pennsylvania, um, we had meetings with um, uh, two separate offices. Uh, both have been uh, very supportive in the past. One is the you know the main sponsor on the on the bill, and um, you know has certainly been a, a friend of deer farming, um, and or at least answers to uh, chronic wasting disease, and that's. Uh, Congressman Glenn Thompson. So, so if you get a chance, you know, shoot him over a, a quick email or something like that to his office. Say thank you uh, for supporting, you know, deer farming in the state of Pennsylvania. He's been a, a big champion of of putting dollars um, where they need to be, and um, trying to trying to solve this problem with us. And uh, we have we have an opportunity to to do that here. Um, so again, say say a quick thank you to him. That's all I have for today. Um, hopefully with, this was insightful. I think what I'll do as well is um, we'll kick this over to the office, try to get this uh, posted up on, on YouTube maybe and, and send it out to the, uh, the membership so we can get a little more traction on it. Um, I, I, I will continue to try to do these. These are much easier uh, for me than, than writing uh, stuff up in the newsletter. Um, I, I don't mind coming on here and, and flapping my gums. Hopefully this, this message uh, is helpful and can resonate with, with you. And uh, with that, we'll wrap up. I'll see everybody later. Take care. Bye.